Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Jared, for having me. Uh, thanks for um, the venue for, for um, being available to host us here. Um, I'd like to do this in interactive thing. So on the on the meetup page, there is a non-link, unfortunately. But I think Jared has posted a comment. Yeah, I think so. Where this 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 is a proper link will take you to the documentation page. You scroll right to the bottom. That's the the important stuff that that you see there. Um, the life cycle, the life cycle badge, which means we're not going to change the API, the API that much anymore. It's kind of ready to use. We think uh, we need to work on these Travis builds. And <laughs> <laughs> what um, I really like is this R Studio Cloud button, which when you click, will take you to an R Studio instance with. Um, Everything installed, ready to go, except for the database, which, which I don't think is available on Studio Cloud. I'm going to go through this script, nyc.r, and um, if you have any questions or, or if anything's unclear, just feel free to um, interrupt. Let's just check your microphone. Yeah, it's off. Is this better? Thank you. So let's go. This is my. Local session. Is this legible? Is this large enough? Maybe try something larger. Should I switch to uh, black and white or is this good enough? Okay, thank you. So, relation that, uh, relational data models in R, what is this all about? Let's start with a small poll. Who's using dplyr and other tidyverse packages for data manipulation? Quite a few, that's great. Who's using dbplyr, which, which is dplyr accessing a database? Awesome. So in general, who has worked with databases? I want to see all hands up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So on the other side of the spectrum, who has worked with the software where you load the data set and, and work the data set? Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have enough SPSS experience, but this is what it felt like when, it, when, when, when using this. and. Um, yeah, anyway, in R, are you using more than one data frame at the same time, <laughs> occasionally? So yeah, there is this um, slight imbalance. On the other hand, we want the data set. Um, on the other hand, we really enjoy working with multiple tables. Why is that? So um, I've been tweeting this a um, few times now. Uh, this is the data we're going to look at today. Um, a diagram, the boxes are tables. Uh, the text in the boxes are column names. So the underlying column names, carrier, um, palum, and so forth, are primary keys, means they uniquely identify rows in the table. The arrows are, are foreign keys. So the arrow from the carry column in flights to the airlines means that um, the values in this column map to values in that other table. In all brevity, if you haven't used this before, um, formally speaking, primary key means there are no duplicates uh, in, this, in this carry column across the entire table. Foreign keys means for all values in the in blue table, there is a matching value in the orange table. So for modeling, for visualization, really all we want is a single table. That's fair enough. Uh, to combine multiple tables, there is the join or the merge operation. I'm going to do this with the uh, flights table and the, uh, and the airlines table. Um, and I use select to rearrange. So the name column comes from the airlines table, and we see the name and the carrier is matching, and there are um, repeated values. Nothing new. Um, this is a plotting example. So if we wanted to do this is off again. Sorry. Am I holding it wrong? We have a backup. Yeah, that works. 
course. Okay, great. Maybe I'm, I was pushing the button. That's possible too. That should be on there. Oh, now it's off. There you go. Okay. Good. So this plot showing how many flies in each month um, for each airline with a full name of the airline and of the abbreviation and this is um, combining multiple tables will also occur in modeling if you want to build a model for, for, for flight delay based on I don't know weather data and um, maybe the airplane type and whatnot so this is the join expression that will bring it all in it will give you all the all the related tables into one large white table um, so you can start working with it now um, we could stop right here so that's good we're ready to model except um, when we really start looking into the data we see oh we don't have latitude longitude values for all all the flights what happened so the join wasn't perfect, probably. And we see so, so the um, foreign keys don't match here. And there's a, a whole array of problems that, that occurs with, with uh, joining merging data that, that I'm not going to talk about in detail. There's a fairly large appendix in the script. I'm pretty sure you have seen all of them at least once. No. <laughs> probably many times. So, joins are tricky, but keeping information uh, localized in, um, as a single source of truth has its advantages. So, uh, this is again the join with the, between flights and, and airlines. We need to update the airlines ta um, the airlines table, only one cell of the airlines table to correct uh, information that will then, when joining again, propagate to all the rows. So I think we really want to work as long as possible in a normalized data model and join only when doing the visualization, the modeling part. And this is what the M helps you do. So it's a package available on GitHub. You can load it. And when you print it, it will tell you where the tables live. So these are local tables. It also works against databases. It will tell you the table names, the number of columns. And it, it will tell you about the relationships. So. If only this, this behaves like a, a list of tables, like a named list of tables. You can use the dollar operator, the, uh, you can query the names of the tables. Uh, if only for this, I think this is already useful because, um, yeah, I have a bit of things going on here. But, um, yeah, maybe I should have done this. If I rerun in a clean session, uh, it's only this one object I see in my environment, and this object contains all the tables, right? So this is DM flights. It's a large DM in this case, so, so it contains, well, maybe not a copy of all tables, but, but a reference to all tables. So tables with the metadata um, and the contents, together with primary and foreign keys, um, are a DM object. So we've seen the visual. So I see three principal use cases for this. Um, and I'd like to, um, I'd like this also to be my, my take home message kind of today. So first use case, somebody has prepared a DM object for you and you can work with it as a user. You can reorganize, query, um, recombine, flatten for, for analysis um, or, or visualization and so forth. Um, 
It doesn't need to be an R function. We can also connect to databases and uh, learn this, the schema from the database in some cases. So the second use case is, um, imagine you're getting a less than clean data set. And to clean it up, you want to work in a normalized schema. You want to decompose tables. You want to have single source of truth for, for all the information that your data brings. You can, even without assistance from your IT department that take forever to set up a database for you, build a data model with um, in-memory data frames or perhaps um, against a SQLite database. That works on your machine, but you don't need help with the setup. And the third use case, um, you have prepared a data set that's really clean, that's really checked, and you want to make it useful for others. So then deploying such a DM object to a database is uh, only a few steps. Let's see how to connect with existing data first. So the DM package has a function that gives you uh, a pre-built data model. That's what I'll be using in all these examples. You can start using it right away, uh, selecting tables. In this case, we don't need to work with the weather data just yet. Um, we use select table to uh, remove a table. We use dm select to select specific columns in one of these tables. We run this. The result has fewer columns, um, same number of tables, and so forth. Uh, now, I think the exciting thing about this, this also works against the database. I have I set up a small Postgres database with a flight data in one of the schemas. Or have I? Let's see. I have. The client seems, seems hung here. I would have shown you this, but this is the Postgres database server on my machine. Same tables, same. Um, relationships loaded from the database, loaded from information uh, from metadata specified in the database. And we can proceed removing more columns from the tables we don't need. Maybe we want to uh, select, um, or we, we're only interested for a subset of rows in uh, the tables and, and also uh, the related tables. So this is what filter will do for you. We run this, and the filters are available as a, uh, the filter expressions are, are printed as part of the object. So this is useful for defining your, your data set that you work with. Not, not as a big white table, but as a, a composition of multiple tables. Uh, where the, the columns you use and the rows you keep are um, visible um, maybe at the beginning of your script when you compose the data model object and, and show, look, this is the data we'll be looking at in this um, analysis. Uh, I've been I've been growing the pipe here, and this this has a reason. So none of this persists unless we store this as an as an R object. So I've done all these things, but the 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 M flights is, still has all the the original information. We need just like in dplyr dbplyr, we need to store the results as a as a new R object to. Uh, make this available for subsequent computations. This is what I do here. And it's there. It's the reduced number of columns working against the database. And I also can draw it. The colors are gone because this is learned from the database in the built-in thing I have pre-colors. 
I'll show how to do colors later. So the flights in this object are, because this is against the database, are lazy tables. We see when we print them, it's a lazy query. Um, under the hood, the SQL that generates the data is a bit more complicated. It's, it's hidden um, in these filters and the, the application of the filter across the relationships. So um, I think that's, that's easier than, than composing the joints manually. Collect, like with dplyr, will bring in the data to your um, local machine so that it becomes a DM object of data frames. Same thing, just the source has changed. OK. So that's the setup. Once we have defined our columns, selected our tables, filtered the rows, we can start working with it. And so the join is one of the principal operations. I'm going to start from scratch here and join two tables. So I'm joining airlines and flights here. So we have to find the joints to go from left to right in the arrow direction. So, so it's, in this case, flights, then airlines. And there is no need to specify the column to join by. It's the data model knows what the relationships are. Um, you, can you can forget about them. It just works. Um, joining many tables. I remember a tweet early last week. How, how do I join multiple tables? That's how I do it. This was the join from uh, the very beginning, where I bring in all of tables that are related to the flights table as one flat table, based on what the um, relationships are defined. Um, this is our strategy for JSON aggregation. So as soon as we have the same column name more than once across multiple tables, we rename, we prefix the resulting column name with the table name, which in this example makes it immediately clear that this is the year column from the flights table. So to get rid of this message, we can remove columns or rename columns beforehand, which uh, is good practice. The disambiguation logic is also accessible separately with this disambiguate calls function. In this case, origin was um, used more than once across the data model. And this means the foreign key is renamed, but the relationship still stays um, well defined because we track column names. Everything. So one of the features I'm really excited about is uh, data manipulation in DM. So our tag to this, and uh, this was a, a discussion with Thomas Lynn Peterson, who um, had a similar experience in this tidy graph package. So we decided to, to follow his approach and uh, define data manipulation as a three-step process. You zoom into a table, then you can use dplyr manipulation, uh, tidy graph manipulation to uh, manipulate the data in the table, and then we put it back. Either we override uh, the table or we store this as a new table in the same data model. So this is what it looks like when we um, use it. Zooming gives us something that looks like a tibble, feels like a tibble. It's not a tibble. It's an object that, that we have under, under control that, that will implement all of, no, that's too much. We'll implement many deployer verbs uh, for sure, the most important ones, um, and track what happens to the data and what happens to the column names, so that we can adjust the relationships. Uh, so this example adds a column AMPM, depending on the departure time, if it's AM or PM, 
we have a new column here. And it's still just a zoom table. So to have the results back in the data model, we update. That's a verb here. That's one more column. And again, as a reminder, immutable objects means nothing persists unless we store this as a new um, variable in the uh, or, or as a as a new object in the in the R environment. This is an example for a summary. I'm using count, which is a group I summarize um, for the number of rows, and I'm inserting this as a new table into my object, and the new table becomes connected to the existing table. Because the summary used one of the foreign keys, and the, the foreign key was still available after we completed the summary, so we know that the relationship is valid. It is retained when we we'll put it back. Um, so this in all brevity, I'm not sure yet where this is going. But I think these, these basic building blocks, being able to use data manipulation inside such a data model object, allow for much richer verbs that, that will um, tell you which rows don't have a matching row in um, the related table. What are the, the values of the, um, the keys that don't match? Where you have other problems in the data. So we can use this as basic infrastructure to build tools that, that, that help us clean uh, uh, such relation data models so that we can um, have a better time when, when visualizing and modeling this, this later. That's for users now. You think, OK, I've, um, I don't have a DM object yet, and I also don't have a database. A database instead, I have this pile of Excel files. <laughs> what do I do? So creating a DM object is fairly easy. The constructor is uh, mimicking the table constructor. You give the table objects you want to insert as arguments, and this is what you get in the result. If we draw this, so there are no relationships yet, this will be pretty boring. The relationships are added with two verbs, add pk and add fk. Add pk will define primary keys. That's the first thing to do. This will give us the underlined column names. Add f key will add foreign keys. That's the arrows. We do this, and we have something that very much resembles um, what we saw uh, throughout the night today. Um, and that's it. You're ready to use um, the M and uh, the, the operations there to um, understand and, and, and clean and uh, manipulate your data in this um, context. You can add color, which helps. Uh, guide the eye to um, well tables that, that have a similar meaning could get the same color. I'm not showing this. I really like this one. Still need to assign it here. I really like this one feature. We have that that will check consistency of uh, the relationships in a data model. So it will go through all the tables, through all the relationships, and tell you, look, you have a problem in this table, you have a problem in that table. These are approximately your problems. You have more than seven. We do this to um, not collect all the problems at once. But I imagine this will be a much, much uh, greater thing in the future. <coughs> just, just an example of what we can do already and what is available as functionality. 
Now, once you have prepared your data model, you're using it, it's useful to you, it gives good results. Copying to a database is fairly easy. We have this copydm2 verb that will do this for you. In this case, I'm copying to a SQLite database in memory. Same thing, that's on SQLite. Um, lazy tables. And this is what flatten will do for you. So again, not, not for the... Um, you don't want to write this code by hand. Maybe you also don't want to write this code with uh, dplyr to begin with. <laughs> so this shows how to create the data on, on the Postgres database. I'm also not going to, to detail this. But maybe one point there, so, so I see three or maybe four ways to, to deal with mismatches in uh, primary, and, primary and foreign keys. So the first way, we ignore them, but well, and, and that's um, what you get. The second way would be to remove rows that don't match. Like you just um, look for, you only keep rows that, that um, have uh, matching row in a related table. Uh, two more ways, filling the, the foreign key column with a null to kind of not, 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 not repair the uh, relationship, but um, indicate that, that there might be a problem. Or the fourth way, insert in the, um, in the foreign table, insert synthetic rows that um, have uh, the, the matching primary key, but, but are empty otherwise. And uh, this is code that, that achieves this with, with zooming, unzooming. Um, maybe we should work more on, on preparing uh, higher level operations that are easy to use to um, clean the data. So, and that's about all I wanted to show today. If you're a user, it's easy to connect to a database, load the schema, or um, maybe if, you, if somebody prepared a function that creates a DM object for you, you can use it and um, work with the data presented as um, a set of tables and the relationships. You can use it to build a relational data model for your own data and um, improve it, work with it, or use it for publishing. So we did, we, we prepared data models that we published on SQL Server where it was picked up for, um, by Power BI. And we used Power BI as a, as a visualization tool uh, for, an for an analysis that couldn't be implemented with Power BI alone. So, so we did the analysis in R, we copied to Power BI, the results used that to visualize. And that's about it for today for me. Thank you. All right. We all have hopefully working microphones for questions. I uh, want to back. Thank you. Um, great presentation. I like the um, um, the inconsistencies tool. Mm -hmm. I'd be really excited if you could tell me that. <laughs> so <laughs> if it runs dbplyr, it will probably run with dm. So we're really building um, on top of dplyr, dbplyr verbs. That's what we use. And um, we just forward. So in a Zoom table, when we do a join, we forward um, to the engine that does the joining. And if it works out or not, that that's in, in the hands of the engine. So I suspect it might just work. Uh, 
the code that learns the database schema is currently SQL Server and Postgres only. This, this should be adaptable, but we're just not there yet. We didn't have a use case. Um, if you're working with another database, you need to connect and then establish primary and foreign key relationships on the R side manually. But this just line, this is just a few lines of code, so should be doable. Can you change? So with immutable objects, we, we don't have any idea of, of, of updates or insertions in the table. That's by design. Um, in a project, we're using this to build a process that appends to a database on a daily basis. And uh, we'll see how we can integrate this um, in, the, in the API of DM. Um, so the way I would approach this is to use DM to prepare whatever you want to insert as a, as a temporary table and then emit, uh, insert into select star from as a, as a SQL to, to, to update the table you need to update. But there is currently no support, no built-in support for this here. So you can prepare the data, you can store it in temporary tables and then from there you really need to walk a few steps to bring in the data into your um, production database. Yes and no. So yes, we have code that splits a table into a um, parent and a child table. So you select which columns go to the parent table, and that will then it will um, use the, the unique combinations as a parent table and link to the child to the child table with a surrogate key. Um, I think I've seen these data sets you're referring to. So, so they have really thousands of columns that maybe a panel study or something. I would really go spend a few days bringing this into a normalized form where if you have a time series, you have rows instead of columns. Um, we have some tooling for it, but it will not just do it like that. You, you need to do it manually. But this. And the, the dplyr framework will save you weeks or months in the analysis, it's as opposed to working with the big white thing. Um, such a wonderful package. Um, I had a question, especially about the, the, the like the enforcement of correctness um, of the schema. Um, I like how you have them record their data documentation. Is it possible to make a DM object using just the schema, or do you need a real data set? So you can use tables with, uh, or data frames with zero rows. That's definitely supported. Um, about loading, that's just the same that, that applies. We currently don't have great support for, for appending data or, or even um, adding new, new rows to, to a, a data frame in the DM. That's definitely the area for the exploration. These are for reading, updating, transforming at this time, not so much for 
appending. But I, I see the use case. We need to get a feeling for, for what, what will be the, the most useful operations here. How do you spell it? How do you spell it? Um, can you rephrase the question, please? I'm not familiar with SAS, sorry. I think that's like a database view where like it's a bunch of separate tables and essentially just executes a query on the spot on the end. This question I actually asked you a few weeks ago. Essentially, when you do the um, the DM join, the, the special DM join, the join or join table, whatever it is, is that just essentially doing the join package on the fly at that moment? Um, so I showed this flattened operation. That would give. Even up earlier, you had like an internal join statement earlier. It's like a, there's a join for a passing more like join two or something. Instead of you write left to right. Okay, so this is the flatten that that will do joins with all the tables. That's the result that's printed to the terminal. You see, it's a lazy query. This means that this isn't materialized anywhere. It's like a view, except that it's not even a view on a database. The SQL is sent to the database server. It's evaluating the SQL and bringing um, these columns in as a return. We can take a look at the SQL underneath using SQL render. And basically, this is it. So that's SQL code generated for a join, or, or in this case, a cascade of joins sent to the database, processed on the database, results are returned. So, yeah, so the lazy table is kind of a view on the, on the, on the dplyr side, which, which defines the, the operations. Hi. Um, question about the DM draw function. Um, what, uh, what, what defines the DM draw? So, DM draw uses diagrammer, which uses VisJS to um, do this, and all we need uh, to specify is the uh, names of the of the columns and the tables, and the drawing is automatic. Diagrammer. Diagram. Yes. Capital R in the end. And capital D. And capital D. Yeah. Thank you. So let me see if this works out. I have in a in a project where I use this a uh, slightly larger data model. It takes a second to show. I can take questions while this is loading. So you can remove tables with select table, and this will also remove the relationships. So in this case, I would create a master DM object and then create smaller versions with table select the way focusing on a particular subset of, of, the, of the thing. Um, also, this united very quickly with parts. No, it did not. Okay, I skipped that in the demo, but we can go to that. We
can use all the colors available in base R and all the hex codes that, that we have to color. And there is this DM set color verb that takes the color on the left hand side and the table names on the right hand side. So when we do this, let's see if this works. We're getting the dimension tables in blue for a change. So that's, um, it, it really helps guide the eye. And, and Um, I think there is support in the, in the visualization package for this. Uh, we should be looking into that as, as we move towards larger and larger data models. This, this will become an issue. So I think it's, this is related to the, the other question. Can you, can you focus on, on a subset currently? That's what we have, but this is definitely an interesting extension. Okay, so the M filter selected name are special. Uh, these would run at the setup stage when you specify the master data set you're looking at. So in particular, the M filter will be recorded and will be shown as the filter expressions. Whereas when you zoom, filter update, it's um, transparent. Absolutely, why not have filter when run on a DM object do the same thing the DM filter does now? But how would that filter know which table to focus on? Uh, I'm saying if filter is run on a DM object, why not how to do the DM filter operation? Um, we, we started with the M filter and zooming came much later, but I still think this is useful to, to have special verbs for um, column selection and filtering. We don't have DM mutate, for example. For mutate, you zoom, mutate, update. So it's only filter and select, really. Down there, please. Um, just to follow up and take back on her question earlier about uh, building building a data model when you have some some tables. Um, I don't know if it's not up here in this center here, but um, when you feed in certain tables, it looks like the, it provides for an argument of I guess like infinite number of tables. Do you specify the relationships, or does the or the DM object want to infer the relationship from column names that are equal amongst tables? Um, currently, we don't have code that would infer relationships based on, for, for example, column name equality. Um, my first question would be in which direction would the arrows go? Probably you could argue that the arrows go from the larger table to the smaller table, and you could use this, this as a heuristic. That said, I think that's one thing we could add because most data models on the database are really um, nice in this way that, that the column names make sense and, and that there's some, some logic in, in how columns are named, even if the uh, primary and foreign keys and foreign keys aren't well defined on the database. Um, we don't have it yet, but um, yeah, it's just one line of code per relationship to, well, maybe two, you need a primary key sometimes. Um, there's, there is, of course, um, space for, for extension there as well. So I think this, this falls into the, the second and third use cases. So you build the DM for your own data, which means um, splitting up the table, um, using pivot longer once or twice, and then defining uh, the, the keys. But then copying this to the database is just one step. So. And, and even if you don't have a database, you can work with in-memory data frames 
And once you copy to the database, it works almost the same. So. Um, So I'd very much like to get this on Chrome. <laughs> and in the meantime, I think the first um, and foremost thing that we don't have yet is composite keys. So um, that's the reason why weather is so lonely down there. There's a composite key relationship to the flights that we cannot process just yet. Um, Yeah, and then I guess we'll see. So the issue trackers, so it's like a Hydra. You, you solve one issue, then three issues, three new issues pop up, um, as, as software projects tend to be. Um, composite keys and maybe tools for ensuring that your data is, is clean. And then I think documentation is, is a big and important part. So, so we do have um, a page, we do have function references, we have an article or two, but these need love, these, these need to be maybe rewritten so that you can really make sense of it. So that's, um, and yeah, depending on what, what, what the user feedback is, we can adjust priorities, definitely. All right, anyone else? We still have a minute or two. Um, I'm not sure really. So in, in DeepFlyer there is a bind rows that will append data to an existing table. I'm not sure we have a these things keep dying on me. <laughs> I, I think it's now a user error. <laughs> <laughs> um, it works for me. <laughs> we have bind rows, but we don't have um, an absurd equivalent in the player, and we don't have this, this on in DB player on the database. So I think once these things get more um, weight in these packages, we will adapt. Um, at the moment, this is something I would solve with documentation. So this is how you go about it. You create a temporary table on your database, and then you emit a SQL that, that adds to adds the data to your database. Um, this. <laughs> I'm not pushing the button. <laughs> This has worked well for us, but requires some manual effort. So that's, yeah. All right, I think you're going to tell us something. <laughs> <laughs>